Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is a game that will punish you for your foolish mistakes. So I'm going to try and help you avoid those with these five useful things that I think it's worth knowing before you get stuck into your first Demon Hunters campaign. So let us begin with our first tip. So while you can play an Overwatch heavy defensive playstyle, covering the landing cones of vision and then blasting anything that walks into them, this really has its limitations and isn't really the best way to go with this game. You want to be aggressive and get stuck up in the enemy's face. Why? Because this game rewards you for getting stuck into melee with the precision targeting system. When you attack something in melee and you land a critical hit, you'll be met with a menu that gives you a bunch of options on things you can do to this poor heretic. And this ultimately leads you to being able to kill enemies with less action points, where an enemy might be able to be blasted to death with four or five action points from your knights. Well, you could probably get that same result with two or three action points in melee instead. There's also various ways to disable certain kind of attacks that they have or to give them some kind of debuff, which is nice if you don't think you'll be able to kill an enemy this turn. But the ultimate goal of the precision targeting system is to get a stun, because if you can stun an enemy, then you'll be able to execute them. And that is where the real power of this game lies, in executions. Because when you execute an enemy, you gain plus one action points for every knight in your team. And that is incredibly powerful because it means more DPS to kill the enemies more efficiently. Or just an extra action point to get your knight out of trouble if they may be exposed. You can also equip your knight with various bits of gear or skill points that all work towards that critical hit end. For example, the falchions can increase your critical hit chance. There's also items and things that can increase your critical hit damage, so you can be more effective on those critical hits and make the most of the precision targeting system. And anyone with a melee weapon can do this, even an apothecary. They may have a little bit less chance of landing the critical strikes, but they can still do it and potentially gain those advantages of executions. So don't be afraid to charge up, get stuck in the enemy's face, go for those stuns and executions, because ultimately it will allow you to do more per turn, whether that's killing enemies or protecting your boy. And that brings us neatly to our second point. So contradictory to our first point of being aggressive, we also need to know when to be defensive. Because if you let one of your knights get critically wounded twice in the same mission, they will die and be gone forever. Or if you let the same knight get critically wounded in three or four different missions, they will be deemed unfit for service and will be recycled, shall we say. So all your knights have a limited amount of lives, essentially. So you need to be careful with them and ideally never let them get critically wounded. You should always play it safe if a knight is in danger of that. And the other side and the other problem of this is that you will run out of knights for missions, essentially, because it takes a long time for a knight to recover from being critically wounded. So early campaign when you don't have a ton of knights, You'll have to go into missions with injured boys or simply skip doing the mission altogether and just recover. In my first campaign, that's kind of what I did. I was a bit more reckless and I let my boys get critically wounded. And honestly, it was so much harder than my second campaign where I was way more careful and rarely let my boys get critically wounded. So make sure you use your cover. Make sure you put yourself in decent positions. Make sure you heal your knights when they need it. Don't be afraid to fall back or retreat. Protect your boys. One of the most useful tools to this end is the Aegis Shield, which can give your knights extra armor, protecting them from dangerous situations. It will increase the warp surge, but it's worth it in my opinion. It is a tool you can use as well to make your Justicars into proper tanks. It can also be useful for getting you out of sticky situations with suppression or overwatch. You can see here I'm stuck in some overwatch, which I'm going to take damage from if I move. But if we overcharge an Aegis Shield to get seven armor, I can now run away the armor will absorb the damage and I can waste the two overwatches of those two enemies. So there is some good applied uses of Aegis Shield or if a knight just has one AP left over, maybe he wants to use it on Aegis Shield just in case he gets attacked. So play aggressively, get in the enemy's face and take them out when you can, but also be careful to minimize the damage that your knights take lest they get critically wounded and your life becomes a hell of a lot harder and you may eventually lose one of your precious knights. To the next tip then, I've come to find that having a well-balanced, diverse squad is the best setup when choosing four knights to take into a mission. Ideally, you want one of each class, one Justicar, one Purgator, one Interceptor, and one Apothecary. I know, pretty obvious, but every class really does have their role. Justicars are your big upfront tanky class, also really good damage dealers in the melee, getting after those executions. Purgators, they can bring the long or short ranged weapons and have some great crowd control attacks. 
which is especially essential when overrun with high numbers of enemies, as is quite frequent to happen. The interceptors are the mobility of your squad. They have the teleport, which can allow you to get behind enemy lines, get you out of overwatches and suppression, and potentially cancel those overwatches and suppressions by attacking the culprit. Or they can just use it to cover a lot of ground very quickly, way more than any of your other knight classes can do. And then of course we have the Apothecary, who is the healer of the bunch, the class tasked with keeping all the other classes alive for the most part. So having one of each seems to be the way to go, but sometimes that's not always possible. I'd say at least try to always have a Justicar for the damage dealing and the executions, and always have an Apothecary for the healing. And then the other two slots are a little bit more optional. I've tried double Purgator squads, double Interceptors, double Apothecary, double triple Justicar, None of it seems as effective as just having good old one of each. To the next tip then. Never miss an opportunity that the world presents you. With all the destructibles around, these can be used to do massive DPS with a single AP and should not be ignored. Whenever there's an opportunity to blow something up or to light your enemies on fire or to knock a statue onto their head, take it. Honestly, they're more dangerous weapons than your actual weapons and will very often be a much easier way of taking out certain enemies than trying to take them out by hand or bullet. And alongside the obvious destructibles, gravity is also another really great tool to use with the various ledges, edges and drops around. And grenades and their knockback, which pushes out from the center of the impact point of the grenade, means you can choose where your enemies will go flying. So naturally we can choose to throw them off an edge and then it's easy freaking kills for one AP, but at the cost of one grenade, Make sure the enemies that you're using your grenades on are worth it. Grenades also naturally go hand in hand with groups of clumped up enemies, which when you first run into a patrol of enemies, they'll likely be all together. And this is prime opportunity for grenades. And as they're limited to one ammo, it's good to try and make the most of them, right? Don't use a grenade just to take out one enemy. Try to wait till you get a few all bunched up to maximize the DPS that that grenade can do. Another tool you'll have the opportunity to use is the stratagem cards, one-time use in the missions to try and save your ass. Personally, I like to use these as emergency cards. If I have to use these, I've probably made a mistake. If I can make it through a mission without ever having to use them, I've probably done a good job. Personally, I prescribe to the idea of it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. These are great to keep in your back pocket to use if you have to in an emergency. At least that's how I approach it. And my last tip is to divide and conquer. By which I simply mean don't run in to loads of troops and pull loads of enemies and mobs because you will find yourself overwhelmed. Even as a double R'd grey knight, you'll still struggle. You see here, I've got this warp about to spawn some enemies in. I've got enemies to my right down these stairs. I've got enemies farther back in another area I was just in. So gonna get attacked from that direction as well. And because I've just moved forward, I've pulled these enemies from the end of the level area into the fight as well. So now I'm pretty much surrounded and I'm in a very bad spot. These kind of situations are entirely avoidable with some careful movement and planning about where you're going because the game does show you where your enemies are roughly and where they're moving. So if you're in the middle of fighting another mob of troops, try to stay away from that other mob that's nearby and take out the ones you're fighting now and then move on to that other mob. Fight one mob at a time, preferably. It's not always going to be possible, but pulling too many enemies into one fight, you are going to find yourself overwhelmed as you are only four knights. If you have enemies attacking you from all directions, it's very hard to use cover effectively. You'll take a whole ton of damage. You won't be able to take out enemies fast enough, and you may well end up with someone critically wounded or maybe even failing the mission. So while you do need to move relatively quickly through missions because the more warp surges that go off, the harder it's going to be for you, you do need to be careful and take your time where necessary. And one of the simplest ways to do that is to not bite off more than you can chew, taking on more enemies than you can realistically handle. So there we go, five tips to get you started in Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. I'll probably update this as I play the game more and learn more about it. Maybe do some of the more campaign side stuff as well. We'll see how we go. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. See you in the future.